You want some privacy with your phone, but you're hearing that some options out there are not easy to use or creates too many inconveniences. You may think the possible solution to gaining some privacy is by calling me names and assuming that Google and Apple are on your side and that I am your enemy. That will certainly make the problem disappear from your mind. Some of you have even come up with kooky ideas you think will address some of your privacy concerns, but these ideas deliberately stop short of having to change phones. The conclusion will always be, hey, I don't have to change phones. Well, today I will explain some of the realities you have to understand to dislodge you from your position that you have to do nothing when it comes to phones. I will explain to you why phones are built to prevent privacy and if you like having someone watch over your shoulder at all times, then of course you don't need to do anything. But if you care about privacy, I will explain why integrating a de-Google phone in your life is still the best option though it doesn't have to be the only option and that's what's going to be new here. I will also explore the possibility of mixing devices to see if you can function close to the level of convenience experienced by your normie friends. Can we strike a balance? Stay right there for a realistic look at how to integrate phone solutions to your life to gain legitimate privacy without any techie talk. Some of you don't like to hear the truth when it comes to your favorite device, the mobile phone. And it will be no surprise to see comments like, prove it or show evidence when I explain phone spying dangers. Now, I will not waste time doing that since I've made too many technical videos addressing that part. Much of what I say is no mystery and documented well as evidence in court. So no techie details here today. Let's state it up front now so my position is clear. It is a 100% certainty that your phone is a spy device and much more so than you ever imagined. And the spy device is used by both big tech and the state. I will just lay out the facts in broad strokes and check out the details in other videos of mine. Do not believe in the lies laid out by the marketing departments of Apple and Google. They never tell you the truth. They cover up the reality and then they drop unrelated marketing words to create a new truth. One of them is iPhone is privacy. This is one of the biggest crock of you know what that you will have ever heard. The phone does what it does, spy, while the media is pushing this false mantra. Let me be clear, everything you do on the internet is tracked by Apple and Google. And do not doubt that Google tracks you even on an Apple device. The biggest threat to any of you is that this phone of yours is not some casual electronic device. It is personally identified as yours. Think of it as having your ID card welded to it. You are identified by your Google ID and your Apple ID. Worse yet, most everything you encounter on the internet, including on a different device, will be cross-referenced with this Google ID. In case you're wondering, they know where this Google ID or Apple ID lives. The presence of your device near you is foisted as a way of internet authentication, so there's always a check to see if the device is nearby. Your phone is absolutely location tracked. The tracking is so horrendous that on an iPhone it can be an accuracy of inches. Someone will know that your phone is on the same nightstand as someone else's phone or how close your pockets are to each other. The location tracking is 24-7. It is non-stop. Unlike what you think, Apple and Google require no permissions to track your phone and Apple even goes further by tracking your phones even when the phone is off by turning the phone into a high-powered air tag. What you do on the phone is tracked by app telemetry. This should be obvious when the phone reports when you use each app and by how much and at what time of day. But you ignore this. Now it goes beyond this. Google, knowing your Google ID, completely tracks every move on the internet on all devices using the phone as the identity anchor. That Google ID is passed on to practically every website. They know practically every click in every website and what you are doing. 
and something I talk about in other videos, this allows them to put you in a list. There are many lists. You may think of these lists as advertiser pools, but in reality, they are also political lists. They have identified where people are with particular beliefs. Some of these people have been incorrectly labeled as violent extremists, by the way, with no actual acts of violence, simply based on their internet activity. What happens to these lists is discussed in other videos. Now, privacy may not be important for all of you. And if being on a list is okay with you, it, then you don't need to make any change. But for those who do not like to be watched and profiled with someone always at your shoulder, you're looking for a solution. However, the world is imperfect. There is no perfect solution, but I will offer some. Some of you offered solutions as well. One of the solutions someone suggested in video comments is to store a phone in a Faraday bag. A Faraday bag is lined in copper fabric and this prevents any radio frequencies from reaching the device. But people who make this comment are usually just toying with me. A phone is supposed to receive internet, text, and phone calls. Obviously, it cannot function as a regular phone if it's in a Faraday bag. A Faraday bag can be useful, but this is not even realistic to consider if this is your only phone. Turning a phone off is another suggested option. Again, I don't know how the phone will realistically function. And if this is an iPhone, it doesn't help anyway since the phone is still being tracked even while off while there is a battery charge on it. But hold on to these thoughts because these options could still be useful later. There is one imperfect solution I can offer and it works very well, and that is to use a degoogled phone. Let me point out a reality that just happened recently. Remember those in the Capitol on that famous January 6th day after the election? These people with their normal phones were identified using a technique called geofencing. Around a thousand people have now been charged in relation to the January 6th Capitol riots in Washington, D.C. If you had a normal phone while being there, then you would have been included with these people now charged with a crime of charging into the Capitol building. The data was provided, as shown in court evidence, by data from the Google Sensor Vault. This has the locations of every person with a normie phone. Now guess what? If you had a de-Google phone instead, you would have been invisible. No special effort required. You didn't have to do anything. You were just not there. And what exactly is a de-Google phone? What makes it special? Basically, it is a phone running the open source version of Android called AOSP. AOSP is basically Android, so the operational features of the phone are pretty similar to what you will find on a normal Google Android phone. So it is not like living caveman style. There are many OS makers that base their code on AOSP, and for the most part, they're all good, and all will do what I describe here. We make our own OS called Brax OS for our own phones and it is also based on AOSP. You can check out our store since we carry many de Google phones and use other AOSP based OSs as well. I explain what AOSP is more deeply in other videos, but the point is that it doesn't have any proprietary Google code in it. Everything in AOSP is open source and most of the OSs based on it are open source as well. This means no secrets. If there's something fishy that is being done by AOSP, it can be removed since the code is published and open and can be modified. Well, one of the main features of an AOSP or degoogled OS is that there is no communication between the phone and Google. So a lot of the spyware like location tracking, Google ID, passing phone identifiers like IMZ, IMEI, and, and MAC addresses, app telemetry don't exist. Those are added later by Google. So nothing on the phone calls home. Nothing gets reported to the Google Sensor Vault. One of the more obvious traits of a de Google phone is that when you use it, you will realize that you would have never provided it with a Google ID. In fact, there is no Google Play Store and many Google apps will not work like Gmail, Google Docs, Google Apps, Google Drive, YouTube, and so on. There's no way to log on to Google. So there's a big plus in that you have an invisible phone to big tech. 
a phone that provides privacy and you don't have to do anything special to appreciate this privacy. The fact is that the Google phone works pretty normally. 90% of the apps will in fact work just fine. However, the inconvenience is that not all apps will work. There is that 10%. Apps that want to participate in the spyware infrastructure will not work without that infrastructure. Examples of problematic platforms are Uber and Lyft. These apps require not just payments, but the geolocation capabilities for the phones and also the fixed identity of the users. This is likely the biggest friction point with the use of the Google phones. Another source of dissatisfaction with the Google phones is that you cannot run some apps mandated by your employer. Examples of jobs with some of these requirements are medical doctors who are forced to use some hospital app or truck drivers that need to be tracked on the road at all times or people involved in emergency services. There's obviously a big instant benefit to using a Google phone because you finally get a phone that doesn't overstep. Most things you want to do on a phone are doable on a Google phone. But the slight inconvenience will be for that 10% of the apps that don't work. In this case, you can use the browser, which will often work just fine. Now, I mentioned Uber and Lyft specifically because they started banning the use of the browser recently. They really want the full spyware interface, and so they require that you use the app, not the browser. Even Google stuff will run on the phone's browser, like for the use of YouTube or Gmail. So it's not a dead end. Bank apps that don't work will also work for sure using the browser. But some platforms no longer allow a browser option like Uber and Lyft or apps required by employers that don't have an equivalent website. So let me offer up another concept here and analyze the effects of this. I realize that sometimes there is no choice but to use certain apps because you've come to rely on them for your daily activities. The gut reaction to this problem is that many of you will say, well, I can't use a Google phone because I have to use some of these apps. Now let's analyze the implications of this statement. You would basically be saying that you will absolutely eliminate 100% of your privacy just because of this inconvenience. And for many of you, this is not something you use every day. You just want it there for emergencies. And the choice being presented in your mind is that either you listen to Rob Braxman and go full caveman or be a Zuck camp follower and go full on without any kind of privacy and expose your life completely. There's no in-between answer expected or asked for. And this is where the analysis of most people fail. What about the possibility of using both kinds of phones? And what if there's an in-between answer? What if you had a backup phone with the emergency apps like Uber and Lyft, while most of what you do on the internet is done on a Google phone? What would be the benefit? This happens to be more than theory for me. I was traveling across the country recently and not knowing what to expect along the way, I actually carried an extra phone. By the way, this was an older phone and you can find some pretty good ones for a hundred bucks. Or it could be one of your older phones that you did not throw away. This phone was a standard Google Android. It has a Google ID, though I created a new identity on it. It could have been an iPhone as well, but a Google Android is less risky, actually, because iPhones have to be stored in Faraday bags to avoid non-stop tracking. Now, this extra phone was turned off. In fact, I just kept it packed away in my carry-on and I didn't need it for plane travel itself. On my person was a regular de Google phone. Think about what is happening here. While the Google Android phone was off, it emitted no data, no location, no internet tracking, no spyware. In the meantime, my de Google phone functions safely as well. No tracking either. Now on the rare need to use the Google Android to use some app, I can turn it on. And the locations of the two phones are never connected since a Google phone does not emit an accurate location. In fact, it is prevented from doing Wi-Fi triangulation indoors. You can't even accurately pinpoint the two phones as being in the same location. Now, of course, each time I turn on the Google Android, it starts tracking. But tracking what? 
I suppose it can track the use of Uber and Lyft if I happen to be using those apps. In my case, I use the Google Android to run Waze. That runs on a Google phone as well, but I figured Waze is owned by Google, so I prefer to partition that data. However, the limited purpose I put on that phone means it cannot really figure out my thoughts and ideas since I don't use it for standard browsing and social media. And this is the important basic thing to realize. Which device are you using to do most of your social media, messaging, responding? In other words, do you have an awareness of where someone might be looking at your shoulder? So I'm not trying to be an absolutist here. I'm thinking to myself, could even partial use of a Google phone be beneficial to privacy? And the answer is a resounding yes. And the reason is that the Google phone can hide the bulk of your activity and thus provide incredible privacy. Think about the amount of time you will spend turning on a backup Google Android to use some app. Likely very little time used. Or let me give the alternate example. This is the truck driver that has to run a tracking app 24-7 while the truck is moving. Always think, what data is that phone providing to Google? With limited use, not much. Obviously, your trucking employer tracks your location, but no one else knows what you're doing since you have another spy-free phone. As long as you don't use the Google Android for normal web browsing and social media, it has limited knowledge. This is the kind of critical thinking I want to impart to you today. It is not necessary to have absolute perfection. It is impossible anyway, since our privacy is being invaded externally, for example, by street cameras and ring cameras everywhere. But partitioning your life into multiple devices will also partition the data and will make the data difficult to understand by big tech. Doing business on a business phone while using a separate Google phone for personal use will ensure that the personal data will never leak. This is the same kind of thinking I encourage people to do with partitioning email accounts, for example. So let's make good decisions. Let's not say no to the Google phones on the off chance that you'll need some app at rare occasions while allowing someone to track your actions 24-7. This is to me just an unacceptable option. If you absolutely need another option, either have a backup phone or use a computer. Backup phones are small, so they don't need to be a burden. But to me, it's ludicrous to suggest that the minor inconvenience is sufficient reason to justify continuing 24 seven use of an obvious spy device without an alternative. If that is your choice, then say goodbye to privacy forever. Be smarter and make the correct choice. Add a D Google phone to your life. Folks, my company creates products that are intended to protect our privacy. We provide phones that have no centralized control and are invisible to big tech. We have various D Google phones in our store. These devices have no Google on them and have no Google ID, so they are invisible to Google. Check out our store for various models. We have a VPN service, Bytes VPN, which is a stealth VPN in that it doesn't scream that you're on a VPN. We do not put thousands of you on a single server. We have Braxmail, which eliminates the metadata from your emails. This means no IP addresses and traces on your email that show where it came from. We give you five domains so you can partition your activities. All these products are on the store on my app, BraxMe. Come visit us there. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.